So the purpose of this lecture is not to say, I'm going to tell you how to make better movies. That's not what high concept is about. So what is high concept about? Well, the first thing you need to understand, to understand high concept, the first thing you need to recognize is that as filmmakers, it doesn't matter if you're screenwriters, producers, executives, uh, part of Screen Australia, anyone involved in making movies must have one primary objective when you make a film or you write a screenplay. More than anything else, people do not go to the movies to think. They go to the movies to feel. You can make them think, but you can only do that if first you succeed at giving them an emotional experience. So, like every lecture I ever give about any aspect of screenwriting or filmmaking, or anything I've ever written in book or, or article form, tonight is all about that goal, eliciting emotion. So if the goal of you as a filmmaker or storyteller is to elicit emotion, you're doing it by the way you create character, desire, and conflict. But of those three, what you also must understand is that emotion grows out of conflict. Character, the hero of your movie, the protagonist of your screenplay, that's the vehicle for the emotional experience. The audience becomes that character. They empathize with that character. They inhabit that character subconsciously or psychologically as they go through the movie. So the, the character is the vehicle. The desire is what propels the story forward, that takes the character on some kind of a journey all the way to the climax or the resolution of the movie. But the emotional experience comes from the obstacles that your character faces. Therefore, the bigger the obstacles, the greater the conflict in a story, the more emotionally involving it's going to be. But conflict is the key. So, a high concept is, it, the goal of a high concept is to lure the audience into the theater or to tune into the TV show or the TV movie or whatever by promising an emotional experience basically by promising a story with a great deal of conflict. Now, concept of any kind, what I mean by a story concept, or was generally thought, about as, uh, thought of as a story concept, is simply a condensed statement of the plot. It's really the idea that defines the story. In other words, a story concept is the simplest possible statement of who's the hero, what's the desire, what's the conflict. And again, bigger the conflict, the more the promise of emotion. And the more emotion that is promised, the more likely that your movie is going to draw somebody into the movie theater. A high concept is a story concept that is strong enough that it will draw an audience without any other components. In other words, a high concept story is not dependent on casting, on director, name director I mean, it's really not dependent on execution at all. It's not dependent on good word of mouth. It's not dependent on awards. It is simply the story idea alone that will promise 
an emotional experience. In other words, if the average moviegoer in Melbourne picks up the paper and says, oh, this movie is about this, and they say, yeah, that sounds funny, or that sounds exciting, or that sounds scary, then that's a high concept. Wedding Crashers and Born Identity, when you watch those previews, yeah, you might be a Vince Vaughn fan, although when it came out he wasn't as, as big a star as he was afterwards, or Owen Wilson too, they've been around, or, but when you watch that preview, it's primarily that this situation, guys crashing a wedding, go, end up crashing the biggest wedding of the season, one ends up with crazy woman, and the other starts to fall in love with somebody he's lying to. That sounds like it has the potential for real humor. So it's a high concept story. And even more so, if you're, if you're grading the high concept level, born identity, is definitely a high concept movie. It's just that instead of humor, it's promising adrenaline. It's promising excitement. And the previews, if you know, they with the narrators, they both had narrators, and the narrator just lays out character, desire, and conflict. He's lost his identity, but he's a killing machine. I didn't memorize the, 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 the narration of it. And now he must find, basically, he must find out and stop whoever is trying to, or he must find his true identity to see why people are trying to kill him and stop them before they do. Now, when I talk about character, desire, and conflict, when you're thinking in terms of high concept movie, it's a little more specific. In a high concept, the character, the hero, is pursuing a visible desire and facing visible obstacles. High concept is about the visible goals that the hero is pursuing and the visible obstacles they face. But the high concept is the one that has the big conflict to it. High concept, so we're talking about visible goal, it's, we're talking about what I refer to as outer motivation, or a character's outer journey. It's the journey to obtain, to cross that finish line at the end of the movie. We are not talking about the inner journey of the character. We're not talking with high concept about inner conflict. We're not talking about fears and psychological issues and self-concept and desires for revenge or fear of commitment or any of that invisible stuff. Might be there in the movie, but that's not the kind of conflict that's going to pull an audience from the story concept. We are talking about the outer journey of the character totally. And, last of all, just to repeat, when it comes to the issue of artistry versus commerciality, high concept is totally about commerciality. It's totally about getting butts in seats. It's totally about getting people to read your screenplay. Again, it has nothing to do with artistic achievement. High concept neither implies high, art, high artistic achievement, nor does it imply low, because there are great movies artistically that are also very high concept films, as I said. But that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about commercial considerations only. So my point here is, again, we're talking about commerciality, that it's not hard to look at any box office list and see that even if you take away the sequels, the majority of the big money makers are going to be high concept stories. Not always, because some of them, like Social Network, just acquire big, big rewards because of those other things. So the first quality a high concept story seems to have based on those lists is a short, evocative title. But you've got here a lot of one word titles, Jaws, Alien, Avatar, uh, well, take away the word the, Exorcist, The Firm, Hangover, Jaws, at Speed, Taken. In fact, Taken was so good they gave him, an, you know, they gave him another Liam Neeson, another action movie with a one-word title, Unknown, and that's done well. Not as good as Taken. 
and not as quite as high, con high a concept as that, but still. So, and even the other titles, I mean, other than Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, that's the longest title here, almost all of them are one, two, or maybe three words. And if you look at the title in most of those cases, it's just as it's the word has a certain energy to it, a certain quality that conveys the kind of experience of the movie. And certainly it's easy to remember once you know what the movie is or once you know what the movie's about. Like Taken. I mean, it's just, oh yeah, you know, it's about a girl who gets taken. Okay. Next, the next quality of a high concept is a single sentence log line. A log line is just the again, it's it's almost synonymous. It's the sentence that describes the story concept. A uh, log line is the blurb that's on the back of the video box. So here's what it says on the back of the box: Tomorrow, when the war began, follows the journey of eight high school friends in a remote country town whose lives are suddenly and violently upended by a war that no one saw coming. Cut off from their families and their friends, these eight extraordinary teacher, teenagers must learn to escape, survive, and fight back against a hostile military force. So notice that, even, in those, even though it's two sentences there, notice how simple that is. Notice how clear and easy it is to say immediately who, who are our protagonists, now, that doesn't identify a single hero, as I'll say in a minute, but if you watch the movie, there is one, and it could have been said that way. Okay, so, but we know who we're rooting for, what's their goal? Stop this army that's invaded Australia. What's the obstacle? They're up against this huge army. Okay, and it sounds, it's, it's genre, it's an action film. Conflict sounds big, the emotion sounds big. It's familiar. High concept movies are not ensemble pieces. High concept movies are almost always single heroes, single protagonists. And then they might have a love interest and they might have a sidekick and so on, but it's born, okay? Occasionally you'll have a dual hero movie like Wedding Crashers or a Pretty Woman if it's a romantic comedy where there are two equal characters coming together. So two you can do and still perhaps have a high concept. But if it gets to be three or more, no. Now you've made it complicated enough that you've sort of reduced that possibility. If you're writing or developing a movie, especially an action movie or a thriller or anything that's going to approach high concept, then what you must have is an act, then whatever the hero's visible finish line is, they must start pursuing it at the beginning of act two, at the one quarter mark. That gets into structure and my approach to plot structure, which we're not conveying here, or I'm not discussing here tonight, but just trust me, it's a key structural principle that whatever the visible goal of the hero, the, the character must start pursuing that not at the beginning of the movie or at 10%, but not until the beginning of act two, so at 25%. Then when you move into act two, as the hero pursues that goal, that act must be filled with stuff on the screen. They must, the hero must be doing things varied, and the pace must accelerate. So act two is where there's an immense amount of accelerated action. Next, and again I'm repeating myself, but it's critical, high concept stories have huge conflict, have immense conflict, have a lot of it, or whatever the whatever the adjective would be. It's one obstacle after another getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And the overall conflict must seem insurmountable. If an audience is going to a high concept movie, they're going in partly because they think, I can't imagine how the, a hero would be able to do this. And I've got to go see if and how they get out of this jam. If you saw that trailer for Born Identity and it says, you know, an assassin with amnesia must escape a traffic cop. Well, that does, yeah, so what am I going to see? It's, it's the idea that it's the entire, the whole force of the CIA and the Treadstone Project and all these assassins are coming after him and then there was 
quick cut things of here's the killer coming through the window and here's the car chase and here's, here's the explosion and here's this. It's all to convey how can one guy get away from all that? I better go see how. And finally, the last quality on my list of a high concept movie is a short time span. High concepts imply that the story is going to take place over a very condensed period of time. Hours, days, maybe weeks. Almost never do high concept movies take place over a period of months and never over a period of years. High concepts are stories where we're not there to watch people grow old together. It's, it's really short. Air Force One, the entire movie takes place in about 24 hours, maybe a bit less. Avatar, they get up and they, I think they have, it's announced at the beginning they've got three months, which is kind of on the outside of a high concept, three months to get the Navi out of there or they're going to bomb, so we know the most we're going to watch is three months in the lives of these people. Born Identity covers a period of maybe, what, three or four days, Die Hard overnight, less than a day, E.T. a few days, and so on and so on and so on. Short time span. Okay, so if those are all the qualities and definition and so on of a high concept, how are you going to use all this? Suppose you decide so let's, let's pretend you're going to start from square one. First thing you want to do is pick a genre. I mean, if you're a writer, what's your, what's your métier? What's your forte or whatever you say? What, is, what do you want your next script to be? A romantic comedy, a suspense thriller, a big action movie? What? So just pick a genre. Next, Choose a starting point. In other words, if you say you want to write a big action movie, you can really start at one of three places. You could start with the character, with the hero. I want to write a big action movie about a bounty hunter. Okay? Now, it could lead you to Midnight Run or something like that, or it could lead you in other directions. Or maybe you want to write a romantic comedy. I want to write a romantic comedy about a, pers about a person with Tourette's. Okay? Something like that. So you start with a character. Or you could start with the, the, uh, the goal. I want to write an action movie about robbing a bank. I don't know who the hero is going to be, and I don't know what is going to make this bank robbery story unique, but I know that's the arena. So that's your starting point. Or your starting point could be the conflict. Whichever you started with, the question is, what's the worst thing that could happen to that character? What's the biggest obstacle? What's the worst thing that could happen to stand in the way of that goal? Or how can I make that conflict as big as possible? Or, if that's the conflict, who is the worst person possible for that to happen to? So what you've done is you've taken that conflict and then said, who would be the least equipped to stop it? Come up with these elements and then you say, okay, what are all the things I could throw at my hero to make this even harder, harder, harder? You want to just beat your hero up, no matter what the genre. It's interesting because I was having a conversation about recent stories or some of the stories I'd heard, and sometimes I get the feeling that writers hold back not wanting to punish their heroes. It's like they're pals with their hero, and they can't, they don't want to throw that much at them. No, you can't do that. You've got to be mean. Mean to your hero because it's the obstacles you throw in the way that are going to make it emotional. Also, the obstacles are going to be what make them grow, but that's another issue. And then finally... The last, the, the, the last, and perhaps in some ways the most important step, you will know that you have at least a high concept idea. It may not, you may not find out it's good or bad until you start playing with it, but you, you, you cannot call it a high concept. 
It will not be I concept until you can express it in a single sentence. So you start with a genre, and then you pick character or desire or conflict or situation, and then you, you know, combine it or add, dis you know, different or disparate elements from other movies in the genre, or whatever, to make it unique. But you haven't finished the job until you can then write down your idea in a single sentence that very clearly and very simply conveys this is who, this is the character that the audience is going to be rooting for. This is what that character wants. This is what makes that impossible. And that sentence should also convey the familiarity and the uniqueness of the story. If it, if it takes you two sentences, you've still got some work to do. Let me tell you what doesn't pertain to high concept or prevents something from being high concept. The first thing a high concept is not is element dependent. Again, a high concept story, a high concept movie does not depend on who's directed it, who's in it, who produced it, any of that. The next thing a high concept is not is a sequel. So Toy Story 3 is not a high concept because people are going because they saw one and two and they love that, okay? So that means it's not the high concept that's pulling people. High concept movies are not dramas. If you say, what, what's the genre? What kind of movie? What's the category of movie? And the answer is it's a drama, then immediately not a high concept. A, a high concept movie is not historical. It's not a slice of history. It's not a piece of some historical event. High concept stories are going to pull the mass audience as soon as they hear what it's about, not when they hear how good it is from other people. Okay, the next thing, similar to historical, is high concept movies are not biographical. Now, by bi biography, I don't mean once in a great while you might have a true story. You could... You could um, uh, you could possibly say that 127 hours, because it may sound inherently exciting, is a high concept, but it's not biographical. It's not about birth to death for somebody. It's not portraying the entire lifespan of a character, or most of it, because it was just an incident in a person's life. High concept stories are not ensemble pieces. You'll know why more clearly in just a minute. That's not what pulls people into a theater. Next of all, and this is a key idea, a high concept movie is not situational. If you're writing a movie, if you're producing a movie, if you're developing a movie, all movies are about characters put in situations. What I mean by a situational movie is they're put in, if they're put in a situation and then we're just watching them deal with that situation, wondering if they'll survive, either physically, emotionally, or whatever, then you haven't given the character that visible finish line that is going to propel the movie forward. Great example of this is Hurt Locker. Terrific movie but there's no visible goal for that hero that's going to carry us to the end. He's dropped into Iraq, put on the bomb squad. He starts defusing bombs. At some point, he wants to uh, help this kid or befriend this kid. At another point, he wants to do whatever he wants, and then he wants to find the kid, and so on. So there are pieces of things that he's trying. But overall, it's just about, let's drop him in this hostile environment and see what happens. I mean, Avatar could be, I, I suppose if Avatar was made by an unknown and wasn't all a big thing, and it was just the story of a, a mercenary goes to a planet, wants to infiltrate them by taking over the body of one of their own, and then starts to befriend and fall in love with one of them, that alone might be a high concept when you introduce, got to defend them from the mercenaries. Okay, but generally you wouldn't think of it so much as high concept because people went because of James Cameron and the big, and the reviews, and the big special effects, and the 3D, and so on. But, nonetheless, peel all that away. 
And you're left still with the fact that these two situations that are in certain ways similar, Hurt Locker made $17 million domestically, and Avatar's coming up on a one and a half billion. That's worldwide. Now, I know that they're totally different movies, but I would maintain that one of the reasons is that in Avatar, there's a very clear goal. We know it's going to be a big fight at the end. We know the goal is defend the natives against the mercenaries as they're trying to kill them all, and there's a battle scene, and the other, it's just, let's see what happens to this guy next. So that's a situational story. And uh, high concept or not, that's something you want to be very conscious of because as a consultant, I encounter lots of movies where the writer doesn't realize that all they've done is create a situation. They haven't given the character a goal and they haven't done anything to propel us forward, so we're just sort of statically watching the character. And, and that becomes difficult in a lot of films, but in terms of high concept, it, it's, it's a killer. It means it's not high concept. Another thing a high concept movie is not is episodic. High concept movies do not take characters and take them through one situation after another that are somewhat unrelated. If it I mean, certainly you could say an Avatar, a number of those other or high concept movies, there's one situation after another, but the situations are always, the action or the sequences are always linked together as the hero pursues that ultimate goal. But if you take a movie like Eat, Pray, Love, there's the eating, <laughs> and there's the praying, and then there's the loving. And other than the fact that it all happens to Julia Roberts, they're not really connected. There's, it's, it's like three episodes in this woman's life. Now, that doesn't mean it's not a good movie, but it does mean not high concept. A high concept movie, a high concept story is not tragic. High concept stories might have sad endings, but if the audience senses this is going to be a tragedy, if the description in the capsule review in the newspaper begins this with, with the words, the tragic story of, there goes your audience. There goes the mass audience. There's a new movie coming up. I didn't see the release date, so I don't know how soon. It's called Hannah. Here's the description of Hannah. A 16-year-old who was raised by her father to be the perfect assassin is dispatched on a mission across Europe tracked by a ruthless intelligent agent and her operatives. Hero, 16-year-old girl. Desire, or what, you know, and who is she? She was trained to be an assassin. What's her goal? To accomplish this mission by going across Europe. What's the conflict? A ruthless assassin and her operatives, that makes it sound bigger, is trying to kill her. So. In the first one, I don't know whether that's a movie I want to see or not, but in Hannah, if I like action movies, I'm going to want to see it. High concept movies. High concepts are simple. Simple, that means easy to convey in a single sentence. There's no question about who we're rooting for, who the hero is, what the hero's goal is, or what makes that seem impossible. In a single sense, it can be simply described, and you know exactly what's going on. Next, a high-concept movie is always going to be a genre film. And drama is not a genre. High-concept movies are always either comedies, Action movies, big action like Born Identity would be an example, or Transformers, or Raiders of the Lost Ark, or whatever. Or suspense thrillers like Silence of the Lambs, or that, that type. Or comedy, okay, romantic comedy, and then I added two more, horror movies and science fiction. But I almost left them off because horror movies and science fiction movies are only high concept if the horror movie is filled with suspense or action. 
Science fiction movies can be high concept, but only if it's the subcategory that says big action science fiction or suspense thriller science fiction. War of the Worlds, high concept. Okay, or you name it. Star Wars, high concept. Okay, Jaws, high concept. Alien, high concept. Next, high concept movies are familiar. Here's what I mean. In addition to being genre films, high concepts always draw on other successful movies in terms of their story idea. Not that they don't copy them, but high concept movies always have antecedents. If you have a high concept story, then there are always movies you can point to and say, okay, those movies made money, so mine will make money. Okay, so high concept stories are familiar. They echo other movies that have been made before. But, last of all, high concept movies are original. Because if all you do is make a story that somebody can say, that sounds just like that movie, then that's not going to make them rush to the theater. So what high concept movies do is they take that familiar situation and they bring something new to the party. They add a unique element so that the audience, somebody looks at the ad and says, wow, I've never seen that before. I mean, since Frankenstein and before, how many hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of monster movies had audiences seen in the history of cinema? And along came Jaws, which was just like almost all those other monster movies, Except, what was the thing? It's a great white shark. And that was the unique hook that combined with the familiar elements of the horror movie or the monster movie or the creature feature or whatever, you, whatever category you're looking at, that turned it into a high concept. That was the new thing. So in other words, if you're trying to develop a high concept movie, what you want to do is combine familiarity and originality. So, I'd like to just say one thing in conclusion. And that is, back to this issue of high concept. Beyond all this commerciality and box office and so on and so on, which does make high concept important because it strengthens the possibility, here's the main reason I think it is a really good idea to know about high concept. My assumption is that you're, if you're a filmmaker, if you're a screenwriter, if you're a producer, if you're a director, if you're really a storyteller of any kind, certainly a filmmaker of any kind, I'm making an assumption, and that is you want to tell stories because you want to be heard. You want to touch people in some way. You want to connect with them in that sort of mystical, invisible way, but you want them to hear what you have to say about the human condition, or you want to touch them in a way that is going to give them an emotional experience that's gonna, gonna give them the fun of getting scared or seeing a comedy, or you wanna make them think, and, and so you wanna create an emotional experience that'll get the wheels turning. But somehow, you are doing this because you wanna touch others, you wanna reach others. And so my belief is, if that is your goal as a filmmaker, isn't it better if you can reach as many people as possible with what you want to say about life or humanity or the human condition or whatever it is. And so the idea of high concept is not just about making money, it's about reaching as many people as you can and bringing more value into the world with your ideas and your art and your passion because more people are coming to see it. It, it's not, high concept has no bearing on value. But what I'm saying is, if you have things that are good and important to say, and you can do it in the context of a movie that you know, or an idea or a story that's going to pull them into the theater, 
isn't that all the better because you're touching more of the world and you're reaching out and your effect is wider and deeper? And that, to me, at its core, is really what this is about. It is about how you take your art and how you take your passion and you use the tools that, is, that are going to help you touch as many people as you can. And certainly, that's what I would wish for all of you. Beyond box office, beyond all the other things we've talked about, I just really want to do whatever I can to help you get heard. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.